The name's Bill Pearson. I'm a salesman and a darn good one. You know what the fellows at the office say about me? They say I could sell sand to the Arabs. Right now, the talk around the water cooler is I'm going to get the next promotion. Things seem to be just rolling for me. Got a beautiful home in the suburbs, wonderful wife, two fine children, I'm in good health. I'm certainly not a neurotic. I've never suffered from amnesia. But do you know something? I don't know who I am. Insight. An exploration in depth of the spiritual conflicts of the 20th century. Insight. How do you do? I'm Father Kaiser. You may be a plumber, a housewife, a student, or a stenographer, but regardless of your occupation, there's one piece of advice you have been given again and again. Be yourself. Relax, take it easy, just be yourself. Priests give this advice, so do ministers, rabbis, psychiatrists, TV directors, and parents in abundance. Again and again, they repeat these same two words, be yourself. I don't think there's any one piece of advice that is given more frequently. And yet there's no advice more difficult to carry into practice. Because each of us is unique. I can't be myself in the same way that you are yourself. God does not mass produce human beings like we do pieces of pottery. He expects something a little different from each of us. Something individual and special. To be yourself, you must first of all know yourself in all your uniqueness. You must understand the purpose of your life. Where it came from and where it's going. You must grasp your own personal identity. What you are and still more important, who you are. And that, as Bill Pearson discovered, is no simple matter. Oh, Bill, did you get a call from the country club today while you were at the office? Hmm? I said, did you get a call from the country club today? No, why? Well, they called here. They want to check for their monthly dues. We're late again. So what? I know I'm good for it. Let them wait a few more days. Honey, don't be stubborn. It could be embarrassing if we were posted. Very embarrassing. All right, all right. I'll take care of it. Absolutely the dullest book of the year. I haven't come across a new idea in 150 pages. Then why read it? Everybody's reading it. Everybody's talking about it. If you haven't read it, you're a conversational cripple. Hello? Oh, hi, Marge. How are you? Wonderful. And the kids? Good, good. Oh, did Jimmy get rid of that cold? Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, sure. We're all fine. Uh-huh. What are you... Saturday night for dinner? Sounds like fun. <laughs> Let me check with Bill, will you, sweetie? It's Marge Johnson. They want us over for dinner Saturday night. Another command performance. Isn't it enough I work for that stiff ten hours a day? Now he wants my free time, too. <sighs> when they stop inviting us, that's when we should start worrying. I can't stand either one of them. Every time we go there, it's the same tired routine. Aged bourbon and jokes to match. Marge? <gasps> Bill says he'd love it. Oh, sure, darling. Thank you. What time? Real good. 7.30, then. Bye, dear. See you then. You're a big boy now, but the boss wants the boys get. The boss gets. Including our Saturday night. Seems to me that uh, you taught me that. Too well, it seems. Just once in a while, wouldn't it be nice to pick our own friends? Marge, the way she dresses and that, that hairdo. Where she thinks she is, Shirley Temple? You don't believe in regular good, good, good evening? Good evening. Is that all you have to say? Well, I said good evening. Uh, would you like the ball scores and weather report? Now, don't get smart with me, young lady. Peel. All right, all right. I just don't feel like talking. You never feel like talking. Unless you're asking for something. What's new at school? How did the semester exams go? Okay. 
Just okay? I passed. What kind of marks did you get? Well, the college sent you in my, my report. Haven't you read it yet? Where's Pete? Isn't it about time he was doing his homework? Well, I guess he did it this afternoon. Uh, he's gone bowling with some of his friends. He's always out somewhere. He'd think he didn't have a home. Relax, honey. Can I fix your drink? No, it's getting so even booze doesn't do anything for me. Well, what's new about the neighborhood, Joanne? You always seem to get the news first. What's the latest? Well, let me see now. The Tylers are getting a new pool, bar, and patio. And the Nevins are getting a new car. The Petersons got theirs last week. So when do we get ours? Well, I'll run down the first thing in the morning. It's about time. That clunk of mom drives around. It's ready for the boneyard. I'm quite capable of deciding when your mother needs a new car, Joanne, if you don't mind. Ideas children get these days. Everybody's a millionaire. At least you're supposed to act like one. Relax, honey. Are you sure you couldn't use a drink? I said no. What have we got left in that savings account? Anything? Not very much. Let me see. There's my new coat. The trip to Mexico. Then we bought that new membership in the country club. What about cleaned us out? Well, we should never have joined. How often do we use it anyway? I don't even like golf. Well, it's nice to be able to say we belong. You know, we take your clients there for lunch. It's good business. And it's good prestige. I mean, you know, if you're anybody at all, you've just got to belong to the club. Well, that's the trouble. Just trying to be anybody at all is getting very expensive. Well, you're making plenty of money. Your commissions have never been higher. And you have this lovely top salesmanship award to prove it. Sure, sure. We're, we're, we're making pretty good loot. But it's getting tougher all the time to peddle that lousy stuff of ours. What do you mean? You always said you were lucky to be with the company. You were proud to represent the product. Well, we've been living on the past. Past reputation, past quality. Let's face it. There's only one thing we've got, and that's contacts. And we do a great packaging job. It's not the item that's selling. It's the wrappings. Ours look better. That's why we stay even with the competition, and that's the only reason. I find that a little hard to believe. You can take my word for it. I think I ought to know. I've been selling a long time, Carol, and you know how it's done? It's a con job, pure and simple. Glad hand, slap on the back, take a sucker to lunch, dump a couple of martinis in him, lay it on thick, tell him anything, promise him anything, something new every day, uh, taken in every day for a while. You don't mean you're deliberately lying to your customers. Well, let's use old man Johnson's definition. He calls it persuasive selling. I call it a con job, but we're interested in sales, not semantics. You must be exaggerating, Bill. You're not a crook. You're not a, a con man. Look, the children have to be fed, don't they? The house kept up, a social life. You like a piece of jewelry now and then? Clothes, a car. We like to give a few big parties, take vacations in the right places. All right. Well, that's the way we get those things. Maybe it's not too satisfying. Maybe it's not exactly honest. Or at best, maybe it's just a little bit shabby. But it gets us most of the things we want. We're a success. Isn't that what everybody wants? A big, fat success. The sociologist would call Bill Pearson another directed man because his thoughts and actions are governed not by interior conviction, but by the opinions and desires of others. He operates with a kind of built-in radar apparatus, which is ceaselessly at work, receiving signals from those whom Bill admires. What they like, he tries to like. And what they detest, he thinks he should detest. Man is made by God to think for himself, to govern his own actions, to control his own surroundings. And yet Bill Pearson, in adopting another approach, a directed approach to life, allows himself to be controlled from outside. He becomes trapped in a web of social domination, tyrannized by the expectations of others. As a result, Bill violates his own nature. He abdicates his freedom. He ceases to be himself. In a very real sense, he becomes a spiritual vegetable. Some men can do this with no sense of loss, but most cannot. The vast majority of other directed men are like Bill Pearson, haunted by feelings of anxiety and resentment. Frequently, these men find it difficult to live at peace with those whom they love the most. Joanne? 
Joanne, is that you? Yes, it's me. Come in here, please. I'm tired. I'm going to bed. I said come in here. Good evening. Another sermon? Do you know what time it is? No. I haven't known that for quite a while. It's after 2 o'clock. Where have you been? Where have I been? Out. With whom? <laughs> Jerry Anderson. Doing what? Oh, fooling around. Yes, he's the type of boy you told me to cultivate. Nice, influential family. Jolly old wealthy businessman for a father. That doesn't answer my question. Where have you been? Oh, are you concerned about me? Well, don't be. We went out to dinner, and we went dancing. And drinking? Yes. I had a few scotches. And then? Oh, and then we... Well, he insisted on us finding a quiet place to park. And we did. Oh, I'm so glad you think so much of him, Dad. He has the fastest pair of hands in town. Real gentleman. And you went along. You let him. <laughs> oh, look, Father dear, your favorite boy is five foot one, weighs 190 pounds. I wasn't about to take no for an answer. Oh, that's a direct quote, by the way. What? Oh, I suppose I could have screamed and carried on, made a rumpus. But that would have made things a little messy, wouldn't it? I mean, the police and all. The father and daughter of two outstanding pillars of this community, playing house in a parked car. Very tacky. You tramp. <laughs> oh, come on, Dad, get off it. You're not even 20 years old, and already you're boozing and playing around. <laughs> now, that's funny. Well, what happens to me when I reach 20? Does that automatically make me eligible? A tramp. You fit the part perfectly. Yes, well, then if I do, I have lots of friends. Because if you want to stay popular, that's the thing to do. Haven't you heard? I've heard quite enough. Fine, then I can go to bed. Now, you just shut up and listen to me. Who do you think you are, anyway? What do you think gives you the right to go around acting like a bum? You asked the truth, and I gave it to you. I told you to be quiet. I'm sick and tired of the way you've been carrying on for the last six months. And I'm not going to have any more of it, do you hear? Now you're going to listen to me, and you're going to do as I say and think, not as you say and think. I just don't understand it. I, I, I don't understand who you've been running around with. I don't understand who's been putting these crazy ideas into your head. But one thing I do know, it's going to come to a screaming halt. There's going to be no more staying up late. There's going to be no more drinking. There's going to be no more playing around. If you haven't any feelings or pride for your own reputation, you might at least consider your mother and me. What's happened to you anyway? You, you've been brought up in a good environment. I've sent you to the best schools. You've had clothes, a car, fine social life, good family training, good background. And what does it all go for? You're an arrogant, insolent 19-year-old with the manners of someone out of the backwoods and the, and the morals of an alley cat. You don't seem to know where you're going and you don't care. Well, there's a name for that, Joanne. Tramp. It's not a pleasant thing to face. It's not a pleasant thing to say. But it seems to be the truth. How, where, or why it happened, I, I don't know. But the fact remains, you, you've had every break. You've had all the chances. And you end up a tramp. An ordinary tramp. You agree? Oh, yes. I agree. One hundred percent, I am a tramp. Self-made. Does it make you happy? Does that give you that... that smug self-righteous feeling that I'm a good father, what have you done to me attitude? Now, wait just no. a minute. You just wait a minute. You just raked me over pretty well. But I just don't think you... I, I don't understand. I don't understand your logic. I think it's a little bit cockeyed. Or your memory. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. You don't seem to know where I get these so-called crazy ideas who I've been running around with. Well, it's no secret. Jerry Anderson, for one. Paul Mason, Ted, all those others you put your stamp of approval on. 
Oh, choose the right boy from the right family, Joanne. Don't choose anyone. Choose the right boy from the right neighborhood, Joanne. Well, let me tell you, Dad. All of them, all of them on your select list. They're right out of the same cookie cutter, just like Jerry. I don't believe it. You kill me. You're, you're in such a fog, you don't know which end is up. You see, I am not, I am not a failure. I'm a success. I play it safe. I don't think for myself. See, I've been brought up in this right in environment. The right house, the right clothes, the right everything. There's, o there's only one thing missing. Who is to say what's right? What is, do you uh, take a vote in the majority rules? Or does some big success man, does he set the pace and the rest of us sheep follow along? That's enough. You're an arrogant, insolent... Yes, and why we're at the name-calling stage, I have one for you. You're a phony. You are a complete phony. You're a phony in your business. You're a phony with your phony friends. And as far as I can see, you're a phony 24 hours a day. Oh, I'm warning you, young lady. That's enough. Oh, young lady. But you see, I'm a tramp. You just told me. See, I have been brought up in this right-in environment. But I turn out with the morals of an alley cat. All right, all right. What I want to know is why. You don't know why. You still don't know why. Well, then get ready for the big shocker of the year, Father dear. You are sick of the way I have been acting. Well, then why don't you look at what I have to look at 24 hours a day? I see my parents. I see them in their homes. I see them in other people's homes. I see them drinking. I see them making phony business deals, phony gossip, phony compliments. Now, I'm a bum. I'm a tramp. I'm a phony. I'm an alley cat. And you can't understand why I think and act the way I do. Well, why not? I have the best teacher in the whole world. You! Get to your room. Yes, Father. Bill. You listening? I, I couldn't avoid it. The explosion with Joanne was a shattering one for Bill. It brought him face to face with himself, what he could be and what he was. Bill knew very well that Joanne would never come to respect him until he learned to respect himself. He also knew that he would never respect himself until he began to act as he was made to act, a thinking and loving being in charge of his own destiny and superior to any material thing. There comes a time in every man's life when he must affirm his own uniqueness in the face of social pressure when he must decide to think for himself, follow his own conscience, and make his own decisions regardless of the consequences involved. This was just such a crucial time for Bill. He knew that he must reorganize his life, but he also knew that it would not be easy. Society does not always look kindly on those who dare to be different. Yet Bill realized he had little choice. He could discover his true identity and be himself in no other way. That fight with Joanne really shook Bill up, me too. That night we were just exhausted, but we couldn't stop talking. Talking, not just needling each other. Kind of a novel experience. He was so unhappy. That made me unhappy. I, I thought I had failed him as a wife. I guess I had. Well, Bill made some changes after that. First, I didn't think I wanted to go along with him. And I kind of realized that he was going to make the changes whether I liked it or not. It took me a while to realize that he, he wasn't really unhappy with me, but the way we were living. I couldn't fight that. See this? The top salesmanship award. Bill wanted to throw it out. Then he decided to keep it. He put it up in his office to remind him of the artificial values it represented. He needed to be reminded, too. So did I. Well, once we started our withdrawal from the cocktail circuit, it became easier and easier. After a while, well, we couldn't imagine what we'd seen in those right people that were so impressive. We started reading at night, both of us. 
and what we enjoyed because we enjoyed it. Bill started digging into books on history, philosophy, and finally theology. And I began taking walks at night, sometimes with Bill and sometimes alone. And I found I could talk to myself again. <laughs> it's amazing how you can shut up your own voice when you're afraid of what you might admit to yourself. Well, things didn't happen overnight, but our lives are changing. And I'll take a happy husband over a successful one any time. We didn't say too much to Joanne. <sighs> she noticed the difference. She was right. A child is a mirror of its parents. And it's pretty easy to tell the difference between night and day. Did you happen to see a, a little book, uh, The Green Binding and Gold Letters? I mentioned this place. This? Oh, that's it, thanks. I was reading it. I never knew you read uh, philosophy. Well, uh, I don't usually, but I, I thought it might be interesting for a change, and it is. Well, would you mind if I pick your brain, then? What do you mean? Oh, we have this paper to do. On philosophy and, well, I don't know, you read the book, so I thought maybe you might have a few ideas that you could give to me. Well, I, I'm certainly no expert, but if I can be of help, okay. Well, the title of this is supposed to be, What is a Man? Big question. Mm. And we've been through Descartes, Locke, Humes, Mills, Nietzsche, Schopenhauer, John Paul Sartre, and they, they all have their own definitions, but, well, I'm not sure if I agree with any of them. Well, what's your definition of man, or rather of a human being? Well, I don't know. I just have scattered ideas. I mean, it's reasonable to think that a man is, isn't, well, he's not a collection of chemicals, or he's not just another animal. Why do you think that's reasonable? Well, I guess because he has a reason. He's got an intellect, a mind. He can think. Mm, he can grasp the abstract ideas. Mm -hmm. What else? Well, I don't know. The more I read, the more I... I find out how different man is. How very special. And you can't help but be impressed. But what makes man so, so special, so impressive? I think you were supposed to be helping me. Well, I'm trying. Well, let me see now. What makes man so impressive? Well, I think, I think freedom has something to do with it. We can steer our own lives. We can make ourselves anybody we want to be. What about other people? Man's a social animal. He's free to act, but not in a vacuum. No, I know what you mean. We're, we'll respect other people's rights. Treat others as you would like to be treated. All the golden rule stuff. What about your own personal values? What's important, what's not? Well, I don't think we can blindly... Oh, that we can blindly take our values from anybody else, what's accepted or rejected. Because if we do, we cease to be special. We become like everybody else. Where do we get them then? Well, I think... I think it has something to do with something that's outside of ourselves, something more perfect than me. Well, God, I believe in God. And he ought to know what's worthwhile. That's as far as I've gotten. I'll lead on, a wise teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I agree with you. I, I, I think God has to have something to do with it. I don't know whether I can explain this to you. I, I'm, I'm not sure I understand it myself. I, I never liked to be alone before. Now I do. I enjoy living with myself. When I'm all alone, it, 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 it seems that things open up and I'm, I find myself talking, you know, to somebody else, someone bigger and better than me. 
It's happened to me a couple of times recently. Once when I was fishing last week. I was wondering why you were so happy when you came home without a fish. You really didn't go up there to catch the fish, did you? Oh, I, I like to catch fish all right. But I guess that isn't the main reason I go out anymore. Maybe I just use fishing as an excuse to be alone with myself. But that's not bad, you know. Very important sometimes. It, it helps you to uh, appreciate people for what they really are instead of just trying to get something out of them. I, I never thought of it that way. That's the key to a lot of things. You know, like living by yourself, and knowing yourself. Not living off of others. And disciplining your emotions. Oh, that's no easy job. But how else are you going to know your own worth and, and not be a phony? Oh, I'm sorry, Dad. What's wrong? Phony's a good descriptive word. Mm. No, that's not what I mean. All those things I said a while back. I blew my talk. And I meant to apologize. So did I. Oh, Dad. You were right. But from now on, I'm going to do my best to make a liar out of you. Okay. Hey, wait a minute. Would you mind uh, giving your ex phony father back his book? Bill Pearson has come a long way. He has faced the great crisis of his life and seems to have proven himself its equal. Now he knows what he is and what he's supposed to be doing with his life. What has produced the change? How has Bill found himself? Well, Bill began by using the powers he found in his own nature. He activated his intellect. He began to speculate about the meaning and purpose of his life. And he began to determine his own values. Bill also began to exercise his freedom. He rejected the tyranny of material values. He refuses to allow himself to be dominated by the opinions of others. And most important of all, Bill began to use his freedom in order to love. He found he could appreciate other people not for, only for, not for what he could get out of them, but for what they were in themselves and for what he could give to them. In other words, Bill began to act as God made him to act. And so it was not long before he began to be what God made him to be, a real, unique, happy human being capable of living at peace with others because he was already at peace with himself. By using his mind to know and his heart to love, Bill Pearson moved closer to God. And in contact with God, Bill discovered himself. What is true of Bill Pearson is true of you. Look for God and you'll find yourself. Find God and you'll fulfill yourself. Give yourself to God and you'll possess yourself. Insight is a production of the Paulus Fathers, a group of Catholic priests who serve their God by serving those outside their church. <laughs>